Good morning from Westminster on a day of history. A Labour landslide after 14 years in opposition, a spectacular turnaround in fortunes. Yes, good morning. It's a day of huge change. It's a day of transition and there could well be more surprises to come in the hours ahead. I know you were devastated by this, Chris. You're really hoping for either Jeremy Corbyn or the Tories to get back in. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, I mean, I, I don't know the exact mechanism by which Jeremy Corbyn would have regained the leadership. Of, but like something I want to say here is like, yes, I think in general, most people recognize this is mostly a protest vote against the Tories, right, who have mismanaged the UK for long enough and the whole Boris Johnson and Brexit shambles and so on. So it is not like an enthusiastic endorsement of Starmerism that is leading to this result, right? But nevertheless, he's the leader and it is like a moderate left-wing leader landsliding a, a victory in the current political environment. And the funny thing is, that the take-home message that I've seen bumping around, you know, the heterodox sphere mostly, is that this illustrates the amount of support that there is for Nigel Farage <laughs> and the, <laughs> like the hard right. The so, hard right, like, yeah. even though the Tories pandered to the hard right, you know, the hard Brexit, all of that, it doesn't matter. And normally, you know, if Constantine Kisson had our election result where the Conservatives won by this majority, he would never shut up about the will of the people being expressed in this vote. You know, it's historic. You can no longer ignore. Whenever Brexit won by like, you know, 52 to 48 or whatever it was, like the couple of percentage, that was the, you know, yeah. instantiated will of the people. But in this case, no, it, there's no like <laughs> the only thing that matters is that the reform party Nigel Farage things gained like slightly more seats and so that's the important story out of it and you're like maybe it isn't that you guys are like so focused on you know interpreting what the majority wants mm. from things maybe it's actually your politics that you're yeah. focusing on and projecting as the will of the people yeah, maybe they're hardline reactionaries and partisans, just like Joe Rogan, right? It's another is another Joe Rogan. Constantine Kisson presents himself as above that kind of thing. Just a reasonable guy looking for a return to normality. But clearly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is, that is not you don't even need to finish the sentence, Matt. It is, I mean, we've covered it in so many of the content. Just go and look at Trigonometry's thumbnails or read any comment on their, any of their political videos and you'll see exactly you know the audience they've cultivated the yeah. audience understands who they are yeah. so yeah like yeah. we don't spend our time dunking on people that are actual hardline reactionaries when that's what they say they are right that's like that's not our remit it's like okay go go, go and do your thing you know there are there are socialists as well lots of different you know let a thousand flowers bloom we don't endorse it but it's at least they are what they say they are the thing that gets up my nose and yours i know is this delusional attitude that their audience clearly is there for the hardline reactionary yeah. right-wing stuff. That's what's getting their rocks off. But there's a shared kind of delusion that that's not who they are. They're pretending. Yeah, that so not you can see it because like Constantine was recently feuding with Candace Owens, right? Because she said some stupid stuff about, you know, the world being flat and her like having like she doesn't believe in the cult of science or whatever. Listen, I, I'm, I'm not a flat earther. I'm not a round earther. Actually, what I am is I am somebody who has left the cult of science because what I have now realized is that science, what it is actually, if you think about it, is a pagan faith. But this is the thing that they take that as illustrating that they're not partisans because they can disagree with, you know, with, conservatives. With Candace Owens about something yeah. absolutely insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's this comes up so often as well, you know, with Sam Harris as well. He presents it that if you have any disagreement with people that you broadly align with, that that means that you are not a coherent yeah, like, group. Not in, that you, not, yeah. Not, not, and that's a, every group. Yep. Every group has divisions. Just to follow up on that, in the election period, Nigel Farage has been popping up around the place and, you know, various heterodox figures have been trying to give nuanced takes on the UK election or this kind of thing. So let's hear Jordan Peterson introducing an interview he did with Nigel Farage. Hello, everybody. In the last week, we've made arrangements with Nigel Farage, who is the man who took Great Britain out of the 
European Union with Brexit and who now runs a political party in the UK called Reform. Um, the aim of Reform is to shake the Conservatives up, let's say, and return the classic Liberals and the moderate right to something approximating, what would you say, an orientation that's actually based on the fundamental principles of Western civilization itself. Judeo-Christianity at the bottom, the democracy that emerges out of that as a consequence of the concept of the sovereignty and divine import of the individual, the family above that, the community, the city, the state, the nation, under God, that entire subsidiary structure to return to an orientation that makes that primary and the foundation of identity itself. Nigel Farage's party is making great headway in the UK, surprising headway, and also among young people. He's got his eyes closed for the majority of that, like kind of imagining this triangular structure emerging out and he's, you know, kind of gesticulating with his hands, like, you know, he's deep in thought, thinking about the philosophical bedrock of Faragism and Oh my God. Like, <laughs> it's definitely the most generous description I've heard of Nigel Farage. You know, it does suggest to me, though, that for all of Jordan's like obsessive interest in the Bible and imagery in the Bible and, you know, interpreting the symbolism of Christianity, a lot of it is mostly connecting that to fairly bog standard right-wing reactionary politics. That's where he essentially goes with a whole bunch of that. It, it isn't into the realm of, you know, Jungian interpretation. It's Jungian interpretation that supports a particular conservative worldview, which is very much focused on climate change didn't happen. We need to support right-wing populists. And in this case, you know, Nigel Farage, right? Like not, not mainstream conservatives and so it's just that i i think in terms of the hierarchy for jordan yes he really likes his postmodern theological waffle but it i think his political skew is more like in his you know crystalline structure the foundation matt is that reactionary politics and then from that springs his metaphorical dalliances yeah and once again, the enthusiasm there is not for the centre-right in the UK, which is, frankly, would not be great either. But, but for the far-right, you know, that's the kind of politics that gets Jordan's head in a tizzy. So, yeah, no, I, I think I'm agree with you there. It's a, it's, it's a cosmic, religious, philosophical worldview, you know, family, morality, the supreme sovereignty and divinity of the individual, such high-minded languages. But it all... Peter's down to Nigel Farage, UKIP, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nigel Farage as the fucking prophet leading us to the promised land. Good God. 